Hello everybody, welcome back to another day at the Elemental Workshop. Today we're going to be making some calcium acetate, uh, which we're then going to use to make an alcohol jelly that you can use for uh, camping fuel or just for some fun experiments. Uh, to start out, there's only two things that we're going to need to make the calcium acetate, and that is going to be a source of acetic acid, which right here we're going to be using some 5% cooking vinegar. And uh, that is going to make it maybe a little bit difficult in some of the later steps uh, because we're going to have to boil off a lot more water than we would have to if we were using a, um, a more acidic vinegar. Uh, but I think this, this is probably the best choice because uh, it's, it, it's probably the vinegar that everyone has sitting around their house. Uh, and then for our source, uh, for our second ingredient, we're going to need a source of calcium carbonate, which for this one, I'm just using calcium pills that I picked up at Walmart. If you can see here, let's zoom that in. Oh, number one ingredient is cal calcium carbonate. But then after that, we have some maltodextrin and a lot of uh, organics there. So we're going to have to separate out the calcium carbonate. Uh, from the organics before we can start making our calcium acetate. And that is going to be where we start. So I'm going to put this, first of all, if we're going to have to crush these pills. And that's where we're going to start. Uh, so to start off, we're going to put these just into a big old Ziploc bag. Right there, and I'm gonna come back when I have crushed them all up. All right, so I have crushed them into smaller chunks just real quick with a hammer. And now we are gonna dump them in this blender right here just to get it into a really fine dust. All right, now we've got it down to a pretty fine powder. We are ready to move on to the next step. All right, for the next step, we are gonna be trying to separate out the calcium carbonate from the organics. And um, highest on that list is the maltodextrin, which is the second ingredient in this. So there, there's actually a lot of it in here. And this is where it uh, comes in handy to know a little bit about solubility. Um, but just uh, to go over it really quick, calcium carbonate is not very soluble in water, at least pure water, um, whereas uh, maltodextrin is pretty readily soluble in water. So we have over here just some uh, cold distilled water, and we're just going to mix it all together and let the uh, maltodextrin dissolve into the water and then the calcium carbonate can settle out. All right, so we stirred that for about four or five minutes. Hopefully that is gonna be enough to dissolve all that maltodextrin into the solution. And now we just gotta wait for the calcium carbonate to settle out. All right, so that is pretty much finished settling out. You can see we've got a nice little layer right here. And now we are going to decant the top stuff. This, there's probably some uh, calcium carbonate still in solution, but uh, this was pretty cheap and um, honestly, it's most of my impatience. We're just going to dump it off and then filter out just this bottom layer. So let's just be careful, dump it out. And then when we start getting to this bottom really white stuff, we'll stop right before it dumps out. So now we can go ahead and set this over here. We're just going to bring over, I just have a, uh, this is just some coffee filters uh, suspended over a jar. So we're just going to dump it over this and let it 
let's kind of try to get everything mixed up. All right, so it looks like this is mostly filtered out. Most of the water has uh, dripped through the filter paper. You can see it's a little cloudy, but that's probably, uh, we're not gonna filter that again. It's because uh, everything we need is gonna be up here in the filter paper. So we're just going to take the filter paper off and I'm gonna, we're gonna set it on a tray and just put it in a toaster oven to dry out the rest of the way. One really easy way of how to tell whether we got all the sugars and organics out of our product is just to take a sample of it and uh, put it up to a flame. And as you can see here, it's getting red hot without anything actually burning off of it. There's no, yeah, you can see it's perfectly white even after uh, that heating. All right, so here's our final dried product. Uh, it is, you can see a pretty fine powder in here when we crush it up. Um, it's not 100% dry, but it is as dry as we need it for this application. So we got measured out here 50 grams of our powder, and we're going to be adding that to about a liter of our 5% acid by volume vinegar. And that may seem like a bit of an excess of powder to be added into that little of vinegar, and uh, it actually is, and there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, one is that I know for certain this isn't 100% calcium carbonate. There's some other additives from the pills still in there. So I wanted to measure out a little bit extra to make sure we had enough calcium carbonate. And uh, the second reason is I do actually want an excess of the calcium carbonate so that um, when we react it with the vinegar, there's no acetic acid left over. That way when we boil it off, um, we're not boiling any acid up into the air. So we're just gonna add this in. Now you can immediately see why I picked this tall container to do this in, because it is bubbling pretty vigorously. I didn't want to let it get away from me. It may actually still do that. It is bubbling quite a bit. And that is the vinegar, the acetic acid in the vinegar, reacting with the uh, calcium carbonate to form our calcium acetate, which is really what we want. But you can see it's pretty milky, which means that, yeah, we did actually have a lot of other stuff in there. There was probably some uh, titanium dioxide that they put in the pills to keep it a uh, nice bright white um, and so we're gonna actually let this react and then uh, settle out so that way um, the other additives that don't react with the vinegar fall to the bottom and we can deal with just the calcium acetate all right, well, it looks like a lot less of that powder may have been calcium carbonate than I thought. It still smells pretty vinegary. Um, so I'm going to be putting in some more of the powder until essentially it stops fizzing. So we'll just keep adding it pretty generously probably because it doesn't really matter if we have an excess. If, if there is an excess, it won't dissolve in and we can just decant off the part of the, the vinegar that, uh, that it has dissolved in. So we're not going to have a super efficient reaction here, but that's okay. We just want to uh, get the reaction done enough that we can, uh, we can go ahead and make our alcohol jelly to do the testing. And you can see it is, I'm gonna bring you over here. You can see it is still foaming. Yeah, so it is still foaming. There clearly is still some vinegar in solution, but not nearly as much. So we're just gonna let this react with everything and uh, hopefully that will take care of the rest of the vinegar. If you want to know whether or not your solution has fully reacted, is a pretty simple way to tell. Uh, if you have any vinegar left in the solution, you're going to need to react it longer because, like we said earlier, you don't want to be boiling acid into the air. So take a little spoonful, 
of your solution and dribble a little bit of baking soda in there and you can see I don't know if you can see there are still some bubbles coming out of that so there is still some acid in solution and for that you're just going to need to add more calcium carbonate until you get a solution where when you add the uh, baking soda you get no bubbles at all and that'll let you know that your acid has completely reacted and you may want to add just a little bit more in even after that uh, it's fine because you can you can uh, filter off all the extra unreacted calcium carbonate um, that's going to be fine uh, you can just let it uh, let it filter off um, it's just important that you don't have an excess of acid because you don't want to be boiling the acid into the air all right so it hasn't dissolved had settled to the bottom and we are ready to filter off the top layer now we're just going to go ahead and filter it off through a coffee filter like we did before All right, now that we let it filter through that single coffee filter, it took out the bulk of the particulate. You can still see though, there's a lot of stuff in suspension here. So we are going to filter this through um, four coffee filters this time, and that way hopefully it will come out uh, relatively clear on the other side. We filtered it several times through those coffee filters and it's still coming out a little bit murky, but for our purposes, that should be good enough. All right, we're gonna go ahead now and boil off all the excess water. Okay, so we've gone ahead and boiled off almost all the water, and what we're left with is this super saturated solution. And you can see it's actually a little bit murkier than it even was before, and that's because calcium acetate is less soluble in hot water than it is in cold water. In this other jar, we have 91% isopropyl alcohol, and you can just pick this up from the pharmacy from any of your local supermarkets. Now all we have to do is just mix the two together. You can see that pretty quickly it all jellies together. This happens because while the calcium acetate is readily soluble in water, it is incredibly insoluble in the alcohol and forms a suspension that gels everything together. It's actually not a chemical reaction, just a physical reaction between all the molecules that forms this jelly-like state. Now we can go ahead and take a chunk of this here on a spoon and light it on fire. And you can see that it burns pretty brightly. It's a pretty good flame right here. All right, thanks everyone for joining in, and remember to come back next week. I will be posting weekly videos from now on, and hopefully you enjoyed it all. Have a great day.